Now, if we look at the side effect profiles of these medications, the tricyclic antidepressants are the amitriptyline. Elevil falls into this category. The main side effect that we see is weight gain. So in a large percentage of my patients, being predominantly female, this is a very hard medicine for them to, to take and to continue using. For the beta blockers, so this would be the propanolol and the timolol, those two medications fall into this category. You'll see the list of side effects here, which include depression, uh, which can be an issue in these patients uh, already, so that this can be problematic as well. Davalproxodium, which is Depakote, again causes weight gain. And in a female population, we have to be very cautious with this medication, particularly in pregnancy, as it is dangerous to the fetus. It can cause the, the fetus to develop abnormally, particularly the nervous system. Topiramate or Topamax, this has a side effect of weight loss, which is often viewed as, as a positive. However, included in the list here is the potential for memory loss and a word finding difficulty as a result of this medication. Now, when we look at the acute treatments, treating the headache acutely to stop the headache from occurring, this is the list of medications that's available to us. There's seven different types. Imitrex was the first one and has acted as the, the prototype, and most patients are familiar with that. This is a treatment taken at the start of the headache to prevent the attack from progressing. The other list of medications I showed you, you need to take every day to stop the headaches from coming. Similarly to using a birth control pill to avoid getting pregnant, you need continuous use to, to have that medicine be effective. Most migraine attacks begin while the patient is asleep. So between 4 a.m. and 9 a.m., we have 48% of the attacks occurring. Now, when patients awaken with those morning migraines, they usually are fully blown by the time they awaken. And using a medicine like the Sumatriptan injection, that's the Imitrex injection, the strongest medicine that we have available to break the acute attack. You can see in this study that only about half the patients actually get improvement. So waiting and just treating them acutely is not ideal. If we had a method to stop that headache from occurring while they were sleeping, that would obviously be much better than playing catch up and treating them once the pain occurs. This is looking at the uh, data set for patients treated with the Imitrex injection, the Sumatriptan injection, during the course of the day. So they haven't woken with a headache. The headache has evolved during the day. It's moderate to severe, and we can see that 81% of the patients get better if we're treating later in the day than for the early morning attack. During pregnancy, we have a lot of problems in managing migraine because now we're dealing not only with the mother, but the fetus too. And all of the medicines that we've been talking about are contraindicated in pregnancy. None of these are safe for the fetus. Migraine can worsen during pregnancy, usually in the first trimester, and then it might improve in the latter part of the, of the pregnancy. Our methods of treatment presently during in pregnancy are really non-pharmacologic. Physical measures, biofeedback, muscle relaxation. Um, we might use things like magnesium supplements because those are safe. But as I've already mentioned, all the preventative treatments that are prescription are harmful to the fetus. So what other options do we have to treat migraine? Well, the NTI device is a dental device that can fill in a lot of the gaps that I've been speaking about. This device works by preventing the patient from exerting excessive force. It's usually worn at nighttime, and when they attempt to clench their teeth by keeping the front teeth separated with the, the dental device, the patient is unable to fully engage the master and the temporalis muscles. So as a result, the trigeminal nerve ending is allowed to rest um, over the course of the night. So imagine a patient who is stressed and has started to develop clenching during their sleep, activating their master muscle and their temporalis muscle, stimulating the trigeminal nerve, and then as a result, triggering a migraine attack that awakens them between 4 a.m. and 9 a.m. In order to prevent that sequence of events, using a device like this 
preventing the back teeth from being able to engage, thus relaxing the master and temporalis muscle and switching off the trigeminal nerve allows us to have some control of this uh, nighttime headache developing and presenting as an early morning headache. This is a device that we frequently use during pregnancy as it is safe for both the mother and the fetus. It has no systemic effects. And I'm using it in my practice for patients who have had side effects from the usual list of preventative medications. So the list of patients that might be appropriate for a device like the NTI splint, in, in particular the pregnant patient, this is an ideal treatment, Adolescent patients who don't want to be on daily medications that might slow down their thinking or make them tired, interfering with their schoolwork, they could wear this uh, splint at bedtime and uh, manage very well during the day. An elderly patient who may already be on multiple medications for other medical conditions, adding in more medication is often not ideal. So using a non-pharmacological approach, a dental splint is a perfect option. And for any patient who's on multiple medications, this is something we should think about. The refractory patient who's been tried on lots of different medications and is still experiencing headache, again, this would be ideal. Patients who have associated temporomandibular joint dysfunction with their headache. So because of their excessive clenching at nighttime, they've started to damage the temporomandibular joint. Using the uh, dental splint, the NTI, is going to treat both of those conditions. I do find a large amount of my patients that don't want to be on, on oral medications, and then it's very nice to have the option of a non-pharmacological treatment to offer them a, as well. So the way that the device works is that it fits over the front teeth, preventing them from touching. This keeps the, the back teeth, the molars, from coming into contact, and as a result, the temporalis and master muscles are unable to fully exert their full force. So their muscle activity in the red bar is diminished, and their trigeminal nerve supply is, is also at a lower ebb. Now, in some patients, we use uh, treatments like Botox to help us manage their headaches, and I have used this treatment in combination with the NTI splint to help get control of the headaches. And what you can see here is we've injected Botox into the temporalis muscle, reducing the amplitude with the Botox, and then synergistically reducing it further by adding in the NTI splint. And that's um, shown in this graph here. On the top line in, in green, we're looking at the temporalis muscle, the clenching muscle at, on the side of the forehead. And it's been injected with Botox with different amounts. On the top line, the first line is the right side. Um, it has been injected with a lower dose than the second line on the left side. And you can see that the muscle amplitude is lowered much more on the left than the right. The master muscles are in blue, and they haven't been injected. In the second set of graphs on the lower portion here, what you can see is that now the NTI splint has been added, and the muscle activity on the left, for the temporalis on the left, is completely abolished. On the right, we still have a little bit of muscle activity. So using these two treatments together, we're able to gain com control of the temporalis overactivity, um, which is reflected of the trigeminal nerves overactivity in migraine.